Hello everyone, this is Raven and welcome to Ironwing Tech Haven. I just wanted to introduce you to my new project that I'm working on. You have seen this case before in two of my videos. You might be sick of it by now. <laughs> well, in the last video we featured it in, we gutted it completely. And then I made the internals with some upgrades into a gaming PC that only cost $200. And $45. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It was a pretty sweet computer, and the guy that purchased it was very happy. He purchased it as a gift for his son, and that was nice. So, here we have the same ugly ish. I don't think it's really ugly. I think, as far as office PCs go, this one's kind of nice. I mean, it's got front panel ventilation. USB 3.0 right up front when you want it. Convenient audio jacks. A card reader, but I removed that and stuck it in the gaming PC. I didn't stick it in the one that was in that video, though. I stuck it in a different one that I sold. <clears throat> and around the back, we have a Wi-Fi card with a chunky antenna. I mean, that thing's thick. We have an unassuming, lovely, steel-colored, bland-looking power supply that doesn't even have a switch, has a light. And we have this very sparse-looking I.O. with what Dawood calls a Mesozoic period port. It's a VGA port and a um, DV port there. We have one USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, network, not much going on there, really. So, from the outside, it still looks like a generic office PC, and I wanted it to. What I'm building here is a form of sleeper PC, but when I open this up, it won't be what you expect. <clears throat> Now, a sleeper, PC, a sleeper PC, if you're not familiar with one, is one where it looks like a an old office PC or an old crappy computer on the outside, but on the inside it's like this sweet gaming rig. Well, what we're building today isn't actually a sleeper PC, it's what's called a reverse sleeper PC. Sort of. So on the inside here, what does it look like? Well, it looks like a crappy office PC, doesn't it? In fact, it looks like an HP OEM crappy office PC. But nothing from inside this case, except for the case fan here, and the DVD drive, came from this case. So we have a brand new HP SATA SSD. It is a 258 gigabyte SSD, and HP makes some claims about reliability and error correction and having a nice DRAM cache on these drives, and it was barely more expensive than the other ones, like a few bucks more, so I went ahead and got it. So it would blend in with that HP aesthetic of this system. So my first goal was to make it look, no matter what I changed, I wanted it to still look like an HP OEM PC to the untrained eye. So you open it up, what does it look like? Well, we have an HP power supply from a different HP computer, mind you. We have an HP SSD from a different HP computer. Um, so is it is it a sleeper? No. Is it a reverse sleeper? Yes, because it actually looks much newer on the outside than the stuff we'll find on the inside. Yes, the SSD is new. The power supply is about two generations older, computer generations, not human generations, than the case. It is a 180 watt power supply. It didn't have some of the connectors that I wanted to use. So, some people buy adapters, but why buy adapters when you can solder? 
just cut those headers off, cut the wires off you don't want, and solder the ones on you do. You just have to match up the colors. People give these redded mustard colored cables a bad name, but they're actually really nice because you can tell just by looking at the colors what they are. Yellow is 12 volt, red is 5 volt, and black or brown are ground, so it's pretty easy. But this didn't have some of the headers I want to use for this project, so I soldered them on. First off, we had this slimline DVD drive. This lovely DVD drive. But it requires a laptop SATA power connector that looks like this. This is the power side right here. This is one of those things that uses the data and the power in the same cable plug thing. Um, so it uses laptop power, so I needed either an adapter or to modify it somehow. And I didn't want to buy an adapter because it's just a waste of money when I know how to solder. So instead I just cut off one of the SATA, the regular SATA ones like this. I just snipped it off with some scissors. And then I soldered only the 5 volt from that onto this, because this only needs 5 volts. You can tell because there are only two wires, the red and black. Then I used, I decided I was going to use the yellow and the black wires, or the 12 volt lines, and combine those with the, the spare SATA connector. They were on two different wires, so it had two different wires coming directly out of the power supply. So I'm not connecting things that were daisy chained here. So I have two SATA connectors that I snipped off and combined the 12 volt lines directly into a PCIe GPU power connector. Now, am I planning on plugging a GPU into this? Heck yes I am. But is this a 180 watt power supply? Yes it is, because another goal of this project, I have a 10 watt CPU. 180 watt power supply, and my goal here is to make a computer that barely costs anything, that also will barely cost anything electric bill wise. So this computer, I want to make it so you can use it and even play some games on it for a power budget of less than 100 watts for the entire thing, less than 100 watts, which is less than a lot of laptops use. So that is my goal here. So that's why I have this PCI power header here, and we'll be, you'll see how I'm going to adapt a GPU to fit in this one, this um, by one socket, since GPUs are by 16, this board doesn't have a by 16 slot, most of the ones with this processor don't, or if they do, they're very expensive ITX boards. Even used, and do I feel like spending that for something that's this old? No. Anyway, so the power headers that I need. I also connected the, the spare 5 volt, because I didn't need that 5 volt from the other SATA connector. I connected it to a fan header, so if I want to connect a fan there, yes, fans usually run on 12 volts, but they'll run at full speed on 12 volts. They'll run at about half speed, a little less than half speed, on 5 volts. So if I need to connect a fan or something, um, I can connect that in here. But I'll more likely use this, more than likely use this for something else that I'll talk about right now, which is that this has a printer port header right here on the motherboard. And those you can use a lot like GPIO headers on the Raspberry Pi. You just have to know how to do some programming and use some simple circuitry to protect the motherboard from getting damaged. And it's pretty easy, and I've been doing that since I was a teenager. It's fun to do, so I was excited to see that this has that header. Because my end goal with this obviously is not gaming. I do not have high expectations for gaming on this. It's going to suck. But my end goal here is to create an extremely power efficient computer that I can use for home automation. 
where I can directly access hardware that I custom build. And this is going to make that super easy because it has that port there. And it doesn't use very much power, which is going to be nice because I'm planning on powering it off of solar power. So this is not one I'm building to sell. This is one I'm building as a side project for home automation. Now, why didn't I just use a Raspberry Pi? I could have, maybe it would have been better, but using the x86 platform opens up a lot of possibilities that are fun. Um, it's a lot easier to connect storage to. I mean, there's so many things you can do. It's easier to remotely access. So I feel like this opens up way more possibilities than the Raspberry Pi does in that regard. It also doesn't have the same limitations. I mean, they have 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a quad-core CPU, which, you know, Raspberry Pis are getting there. You can get them with these specs. And some of them might even outperform this, but I, I don't know. And that'll be something to look into. But mostly, I'm curious to see what I can do with this. Now, the, th the other goal that I had is kind of funny, kind of pointless, kind of dumb. <laughs> but I realized this computer contains parts from three different decades. The motherboard was made in 2014. The SSD was made this year. The case was made a few years ago. like, I don't know, four years ago or something, four or five years ago. And this Linksys Wireless G network card, yes, it's like Wireless G speeds, was made in 2003. So I thought it would be very interesting if I could create a build that looks like an unassuming office PC from the outside, looks like an unassuming office PC from the inside, looks like an OEM office PC from the inside, but contains parts from every decade I've lived in. And so far I have all the parts from every decade, parts from every decade except for the 80s and the 90s. And I thought that'd be easy to accomplish with a mouse and keyboard, but I really want to have parts in here from every decade, just as kind of a fun experiment to see if I can do that and have all the parts be functional without detracting from, from my ability to use the computer or just adding them just to say that I stuck them in. So I need something from the 80s, something from the 90s, and if you all can think of some options, that would be great. I might replace the Wi-Fi card with a newer one and get something else from that decade so I can use a PCI slot for something from the 90s. So that's an option. Um, it also has this COM port header on the motherboard so I can connect some sort of serial device to that. So... It's going to be interesting. Another cool thing, another thing that I did with this is I had to replace the original PC speaker. Now, these HPs don't just use PC speakers to beep like other computers do. They actually have an audio amplifier on board and you connect a speaker to it that it outputs all the audio to if you, if you select that in the settings. So I already used that PC speaker in a different build. So I had to stick a different speaker here. This is one that I tore out of um, an old speaker system. And this is, um, it's important to match up the resistance of these speakers so you don't short the board out. So this is a 10 ohm speaker like the original. 10 ohm, sorry, 8 ohm, 8 ohm speaker, 8 ohm, 10 watts. It's a bit bigger, produces a bit more sound. The sound quality still sucks, though. It's nothing to be um, excited about. It's very tinny. Anyway, 
So that's my project to make a reverse sleeper system that looks like a regular office PC from the outside, looks like a regular office PC from the inside, but is extremely energy efficient, under 100 watts, you can actually play some games on, and that I can use for home automation that also contains parts from all the decades since the 80s. Yet, it's kind of crazy. I don't really know why I'm doing it, but I just think it's kind of fun, I guess? And it's not really costing much, and it's going to be a useful thing that I'm going to be using. So, there you have it.